Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. I'm excited to bring you the third out of the fourth episode of the Floy Convex event that I'm covering. It's going to be a plant tour of a booth here. There are a lot of really interesting vendors that are coming in and they are all bringing some interesting specimens of plants, a lot of which we've never seen before. Come along with me on this tour where I overshare my own personal experiences and also ask some of the experts for any advice that they might have on some of these plants. And I'm going to quickly summarize this video. There's going to be some rare aeroids. There's some massive, massive rare aeroids. And then there's also some insanely variegated aeroids. So if you are an aeroid freak, do not miss out on this one. We also see some interesting landscaping and interior scape. Finally, on the third act, there's going to be an interesting Hoya booth where we spend a lot of time and we talk about different species, we talk about mutations, we even talk about how to cultivate some of these mutations. And yeah, you don't want to miss that one if you're a Hoya head. Oh, and I forgot to mention that where possible, I will include the price on the screen. So when you check out the name of the plant, there may be a US dollar price on top, just in case you want to know how much these plants cost. But again, not all of these plants are labeled, so a lot of them are not going to have prices on them. But feel free to reach out to some of them. I know that you guys are living abroad in case you wanted to inquire about importing or exporting. And I have a feeling that all of these booths do export. We start the tour at Flora Ayu Nusantara. She's a rare plant collector and seller. This one is a Monstera Thai constellation that has a curly mutation. So the leaves are actually curly on some of the sides. This is actually stable and people have already bought some of the cuttings. So this is literally sold out. Look at how interesting it is. It's as if you took a curling iron over the leaves and just curled them. I think she mentioned that it's from Thailand, but I could be wrong. I can't re remember where this variety came from, but how interesting is that? This is also very expensive now. This is an Indonesian local plant. This is probably an Ardesia, Labesia. It's got really narrow pointy leaves that has really amazing coloration on them. Now, I don't know exactly how you would describe this color. It's like a maroon, almost black and some greens if you look carefully, but the silver center feature is what caught my eye. This is Susie Garden. She's actually an exporter. So feel free to contact her if you are interested in importing some plants from Indonesia. These are some large specimens of Florida beauty. This is a Monstera, probably a Marlin, yellow Marlin, but it could also be the Aurea. There's so many varieties of Monsteras now that I cannot keep track of all of them. These are some of the more common plants. This is a male confetti Syngonium. They are becoming a little bit more affordable now. And there are mostly aeroids here. There are some philodendrons that's variegated. This one here is a massive, massive philodendron white princess. And we know it's a princess because it's got a little bit of pink on the coloration. Sometimes a new leaf unfurls pink color. Look at how big this is. This is like philodendron gold. This is what happens when we don't have to take our cuttings and sell little cuttings anymore. We can grow them big. This is a huge philodendron strawberry shake. I've actually sold many cuttings of this, but look at how beautiful the variegation is on this one. So it is now time for us to grow things out so that they can be a little bit bigger. This is a Monstera Mint. It's 2.5K US dollars. This is a Philodendron Green Congo variegated, also 2,500 US dollars. They're still very expensive. This is a variegated Halmalonia, Halmalomina. Look at how nice and rosette this is and the, how even the variegation is. Susie Garden is known to have some really, really strong variegated plants that are good quality. She has become quite the rare plant purveyor. Now this Syngonium stood out to me. This is actually a milk confetti tricolor. We actually featured this in the last episode, but I did not know that they come in a tricolor. This is pretty insane. It's a little bit too much color in my opinion. There's too much going on, but for some of y'all, this may be something of interest. Again, this is pretty new to the market so they are still pretty expensive not easy to come by the next booth art garden flowers and autumn plant these are shared as well art art garden i believe is from bandung if i'm not wrong this is a monstera boromax flame they've become quite popular uh, they are still pretty expensive in my opinion this one i was deciding what this was it looks kind of like an alocasia it could be an anthurium but i was later revealed that this was actually a caladium this is a hapaline 
if I'm not wrong, we did feature this in the last episode, but I, I can't be sure. It could also be an alocasia. It's got wonderful military pattern on it. These are some anthuriums. Look at how dark the anthurium leaf is. It just calls out to you sometimes when the leaf is that dark and that shiny at the same time. So these anthuriums are actually quite popular now. There are a lot of hybrids that are selectively bred for darker and darker leaf color and this red is particularly really stunning there's some alocasia fry deck variegated apparently the fry deck is already the variegated so we don't really need to say the word variegated behind it anymore this is some stable stable variegation on the alocasia and they're very nice velvety leaves with this creamy splash of white I actually really like this. I'm very fond of this. I would definitely love to get my hands on some of these when they have become affordable or if I come into a lot of money suddenly. This is a beautiful anthurium. Look at how beautiful the new leaf is. It's always this red and maroon. It kind of likes to show off and then they would enlarge and turn green and suede like like that. Now this, that's the Caladium that we saw earlier. This is actually the Caladium Hilo Beauty that's variegated. I did not know that Caladiums can be variegated. I guess anything in these days can be variegated, but this is quite stunning and it can get huge over time. This is a baby fry deck. Look at how cute is this? This is the cutest thing ever. I love looking at expensive plants when they are in the baby form, as well as when they're large already, of course. But I really hope this guy makes it. It's, it's such a cutie, oh my God. I really would love to get my hands on one of this. This is on my wish list. I think I actually lost my regular fry deck during the move. I don't know where I placed it. And this is Irene from Leafing Around. Please do follow her channel in case you haven't. She's like the number one YouTuber in Southeast Asia. This is Jakarta Nursery Center. Now I'm not sure exactly that what store this is. Maybe it's a group or yeah, but that's a huge, huge philodendron dragon variegated. This is actually massive. That's my hand for comparison. I've only seen like medium sized ones of these that are the size of your face, but apparently they can get huge. And that stripe down the middle, look at that. How elegant is that? That is so beautiful. It's very energizing. I think this is a plant that looks good variegated as well as all green. This is Raff House. They're also a popular seller here. This is a huge anthurium leaf. Look at that. The leaves are gorgeous. And look at the back of this one leaf. The veins are so strong. It looks like it's wearing a corset, but it's in flower and the flower is actually impressive. Sometimes with anthuriums, the ones that are grown for nicer leaves don't usually flower that well, but this one has both nice leaves and flowers. This is a philodendron esmeraldense. This is already pretty mature. This is actually huge and they have an interesting selection of plants inside. This one anthurium is amazing. It's the anthurium FF AFF modianum and that means that it looks like a modianum but it could not, it might not be one. Look at how beautiful this new leaf is. This is pretty amazing. It's very electrifying and that dark, dark color is so sexy. This is a bird nest type anthurium. We don't know the species because they have been hybridized so heavily, but look at the coloration. This is probably the work of Eddie Pranoto, but it's also potentially imported from Thailand or from another breeder. But Eddie Pranoto in Indonesia is one of the most well-known breeders for this. This is the Philodendron Red Congo Variegated. This is on my wish list, you guys. This is like so beautiful. It's got this like amazing, flamingo pink almost like a sunset type color gradation on the variegation and just the petiole and the leaf the green on the leaves is like amazing it's like this royal dark green that is very very elegant this looks like a painting that i would have bought if this was a painting of a plant i would have absolutely have bought it and the old leaves actually turn a little bit more dull the variegation turns into more like a cream or white but let's look at this let's appreciate the beauty of it up close and then here is a philodendron upi they've come into the market quite strong lately they used to be almost like a godlike status where you can't really buy them you have to be like a millionaire to afford them but now they are a little bit more accessible to most people they actually grow in a rosette form like this but if you let them grow up on a moss pole or a wall or facing the window it will grow towards one side only 
there's a beautiful philodendron green congo variegated so the red congo and the green congo is probably very similar but then this one has a different variegation look at how amazing this variegation is there's that stripe again that runs down the middle kind of like the philodendron golden dragon and then look at the new leaf that new leaf has amazing variegation it's predominantly variegated and the tip is just so elegant and the one thing that's amazing about variegated plant is that everything is temporary right so all the leaves here that you see will die at some point so their beauty is only temporary they're only here for now so we have to really slow down and enjoy them or even document them so i'm really glad to have this channel where i can photograph or video some of these specimens so variegated plants are really really different from green form plants because green plants will always be green this is also why the variegated plants fetch a lot more price and this one i found this guy just tucked under here this is the viterifolium tricolor well actually i named it tricolor i asked ref house what this is but she just said that this is a variegated anthurium viterifolium but i see some lime green yellow and white variegation so i'm gonna unofficially just call this a tricolor this is one of the prettiest plants and definitely definitely one of the plants that i vote well not plants but one of the aeroids that i vote as the prettiest one in this show possibly this is of course subjective i don't mean to offend people in this show but this is amazing look at that this color combination and the shape of the leaves it all comes together really really well if i were you and i have some money i would definitely hound ref house on instagram and ask if they export and how much this plant is this next booth is actually a landscaping service it looks like a pre-wedding type set setup. Look at how nice this is. I think in Indonesia, we need a lot more public spaces that looks kind of like this, a lot of photo booths because in Thailand, this is quite common, this kind of feature, but in Indonesia, we're just catching on, unfortunately. And this is so simple. It's basically a steel mesh structure with a lot of common plants mounted on them. This one is a philodendron McDowell, and this is actually a hybrid between a gloriosum and a Passizanum. And we know that this is a hybrid because if you feel the petal in the back, this is almost like a D shape. The Gloriosum is actually pretty sharp on the petal and the Passizanum is completely round. This is why the hybrid is like a D shape because you cannot decide if it wants to be sharp or round. But it exhibits the best of both parents. It's very, very fast growing. It's very easy to grow. It does lack a little bit of that pink that Gloriosums usually sport that I really, really like. But then they become this pillow shaped huge leaf over time if you care for them correctly they can become insanely large and that pillowy shape it adds a lot of softness to your space it looks like you can just dive into it and it will catch you and this is a plant throne look at this this is where you can have your morning coffee or you can just have people come over and pose next to the plants so this is really good if you have like a business a cafe a lot of these plants can actually draw business to you I really, really recommend more of an interior scape or landscaping for Indonesians. And of course, if you live overseas, there are a lot of plant stores that kind of look like this already. Now, this is a very common fern, the Drynaria. I mentioned this in the first episode, but it's such a cheap fern. It's really, really inexpensive. It's fast growing. It's easy to grow. But look at how it looks here. It makes this place look like a million dollars. So some common plants can look amazing. It can really add value to a space. This is another landscaping service. This is by SK Garden. This is actually a toilet. So it really looks like a villa in Bali. A lot of villas in Bali have an outdoor toilet setting as an option. But here's one tip. When you want to double the size of your plants without spending extra money or the effort to care for them, just add a mirror because everything you see in the mirror is going to reflect and you instantly double your plant collection. So this is a really, really good tip. Imagine this mirror just brushing your teeth in the morning. It brings so much joy to people. And this fern has grown out of control. Look at how lush this is. They're actually easy growing. They do need consistent watering and they do need a lot of light. And they need a lot of pruning, by the way. They will always shed leaves. So you always have to, like this one here, you always have to take them off because they look unsightly, especially if you have like important guests coming, you have a hot date coming you gotta always prune them they're very very good plants for people with add kind of like me but these guys are always growing so don't worry if they shed leaves now and then because if you give the right conditions they are unstoppable 
This is the owner of Eska Garden. This is Icha, and this is her other booth. But this one is more of a houseplant store. Now, one thing that I really, really respect about Icha, who is again the owner of Eska Garden, is that in this morning while I was getting ready for this event, they were doing live sale on Instagram, brighter and early in the morning. And she's so hardworking, and she loves many genuses of plants. She's very knowledgeable, not just with plant care, but also where to source them. And look at this. This is the result of their sales this morning. All of these plants that are wrapped up have been sold just from the live sale alone. And I remember that their topic today was actually roses. So they had a lot of roses on sale. This is a variegated philodendron gloriosum. Beautiful veining on this. I believe this is the dark form. And I know that this form is the common one overseas, but for Indonesia, the dark form is actually considered very rare and very expensive. I really love when people style with multiple of these heart-shaped leaf uh, philodendrons and also could be anthuriums. They look really, really stylish when you have them together. This is a Clusia rosea and it is actually a distant relative to the mangosteen fruit. I actually see this in Thailand quite a lot used in landscaping for both indoors and outdoors, but I'm guessing that they can take direct sunlight or full sun. This is an uh, orchid booth and I just really adore. Look at this one contraption here. It's basically a lot of like dry twigs tied together and these orchids are just like kissed skating down like waterfall. Imagine just mounting this whole thing against a wall. It would be so amazing. These orchids are now in bloom. They don't have really showy leaves to show us, but the blooms are spectacular. Now orchids comprise of many, many species within the genus. There are some tiny, tiny ones like this one. Look at how each node here has flowers. This is amazing. They also have some interesting uh, larger leafed ones. There are some orchids that only has roots but no leaves. This is a Dendrobium anosmum. It actually smells like a bubble gum. This is an easy, easy Dendrobium. I highly recommend it for newbie orchid growers. That's a Platycerium wandi that's huge on the wall. This Anthurium, Look at this modified leaf. So when we say anthurium flowers, we actually mean they're modified leaf. The flowers are actually inside, they're super tiny, they're in the spedex of the anthurium itself. This particular one I really love. Look at that little bit of red in the middle. It looks like someone applied lipstick to it very abruptly. At this point, I'm speaking so fast and speaking non-stop, I feel like a sports commentator. But I hope that you guys are enjoying these videos and I'm trying to slow down as much as possible, but just, I'm just so excited. Look at this new leaf. The new leaf is like rubbery, tiny, and it will expand into these glossy green leaves. This is a Colocasia ferros mask. They used to be also be very, very expensive, but because they've fallen in price, I'm assuming that they're actually very fast growing and reproduce very easily. This begonia is something else. Look at how stunning this is it actually called out to me and it is in flower so I guess it's either doing really well or it's struggling because plants sometimes do flower when they are struggling and the flowers are just so darling they're so tiny like little earrings on fairies but again this uh, begonia they don't know the species because I did ask them and I hope that they multiply this and they become a little bit more attainable this is a slipper or lady slipper orchid that's a common name of, of it it's supposed to be not too hard but this one has really really nice leaves not only does it sport really amazing flowers but the leaves are oh my god it just looked like a succulent or like a sensevieria so if this plant is not blooming we can actually sit back and enjoy the leaves for a while and this is an interesting Hoya caudata. Now, normally they are from Aceh, but this one is Hoya caudata silver from Borneo. So it must be a different mutation or different variety of the Hoya caudata, but they probably flower the same. And we will discuss Hoya at some point later in the episode. This next plant, I'm confused because it's a jewel orchid, right? So I don't really know the genus and species name. If you Google them up, the conflicting names come up, but I'm just going to call them jewel orchid. But it's potentially what was flashed on the screen. Do comment down below if you know. Now, this orchid is really, really interesting. It looks like a row of fairies sleeping together in a sleeping bag. How wonderful is that? <laughs> And for you Hoya heads out there, this is an amazing 
Hoya supplier and collector in Indonesia. They have like a really nice supply chain. They have a huge team that grows out Hoyas. They often do live sale on Instagram as well. And from all I know, they do export. So feel free to reach out to them if you see anything of interest to you here. They actually explain a lot about Hoyas and I am trying to regurgitate that information to you as best as I can in English because our conversation was originally in Indonesian language. And I love how that all these Hoyas are in pristine conditions, which is amazing. This is a FF, AFF Paul Shirley. Now, when they're pristine conditions like this, we know that they're not taken from the forest because a lot of Hoyas and Hoya sellers are still taking Hoyas directly from the forest. And sometimes they are also grown in like home backyard nurseries where the leaves don't look as pristine as this. So this is a well cared for Hoya that we would see in like the Western civilizations because Hoyas are clearly well liked there more so than here. Of course, people are starting to get into Hoya here in Indonesia, but I can literally count with my hands how many rare Hoya collectors there are in Indonesia, which is a big, big country. This is really, really beautiful. The names are also on the tag on the screen. So feel free to pause if you want to see some of the names on the screen. Some of these Hoyas are still quite new to me. And this next Hoya is really, really beautiful. It's got like nice variegation on the outside. There's a sun-stressed Hoya behind it. And when you buy Hoyas, they're actually tiny like this. They're usually a single plant, but then they can quickly grow into like a full plant. This one is the Hoya Forbesii, Forbesi Splash also new to me. This grower is actually located about two hours away from Indonesia up in the mountainous region. This is a Hoya Clemensorium. It's got really, really nice like reptile-like or almost jungle vibe leaves that is like Jurassic era. And this is actually quite affordable now, but they're not the fastest growing. They do sun stress quite beautifully. And these huge leaf propagations are amazing. I believe they are the Clemensorium Borneo. Look at how nice the leaves are, this little camouflage pattern on it, and then that really sinister looking vein down the middle, and these leaves are huge. Look at that, my hand for comparison. I guess this is still pretty rare because they are sold as single cuttings. Now this one here, somebody explained to me that this is actually not the latifolia, or rather the macrophylla variegated. This is something else. The name might be on the screen, it's called Quin Quincy something, but this is actually a mutated variety of them where the leaf can get huge. This is only a small size. The person explained that it could be as long as your fist. That's how big this Hoya leaf can be. But it is pro probably closely related to the Latifolia or the Macrophylla that we know. And the variegation is really nice on this. Look at the gradation between the whites and the yellows. And when you see these baby leaves, you gotta be very, very careful with them. Be gentle. Once you knock them off, it's done. It won't grow back on the same node again. So always treat your baby leaves with a lot of kindness and patience. But I really enjoy staring at them, watching them grow and turn into this over time. Now, if we talk about Hoya latifolia, they have many, many varieties. They have the variegation on the outside, the variegation on the inside, such as this one. There's a pot of gold, but there's also the splash version, which is this one here. It's called the Hoya macrophylla peridot. This is actually more of a like a yellowish variegation, but I want to mean by splash is that they, some of them have silver splash on the leaves. So this is the pot of gold. They used to be really, really rare, and then now they've become very attainable, very accessible, and the price is actually quite good. And this is actually a beautiful, beautiful Hoya. I do recommend this for beginners. And of course, if you want to just get the regular variegated, which is the variegation on the outside, that's amazing too. Those are very, very affordable. Now you can probably even get a cutting from a friend. They actually grow rather fast and they're very easy to propagate. They do like a little bit of direct sunlight in my opinion, and they can get beautifully sun stressed with pink new leaves. This is a Hoya Wayedii variegated, and this is also a very popular Hoya because of its beauty. It's got this amazing tricolor variegation and the new leaves come out red. This is very expensive actually, this one full pot of it. They're actually not the fastest growing, but when you buy like a tiny little plant and you keep propagating it and you keep sticking them back in the pot, they will eventually turn into this. If I'm not wrong, the guy told me that this is actually a three-year-old plant. This is how long it takes for them to grow up to this size. So if you buy a cutting, you need to wait three years before you turn into this. 
if you don't kill it first. This one actually hates water, so do not over water this time. Maybe because it has very little chlorophyll to photosynthesize. It's also possible that it's slow growing because it has so much variegation on the leaves. But it's just so beautiful. This used to be a lot more expensive than it is now. And this here, this is the Hoya sigillatus, and I will explain that there are actually many, many forms of the sigillatus. This is the silver long leaf. He actually explained to me that within the same vine of Hoyas, sometimes you would see some leaves that are strange or mutated. And this is quite common with the carnosa. If you have a carnosa, you'll know that it can sometimes turn into the Hindu rope. It can curl in on itself. So when you take these really interesting leaves and you cut them on the node, Chances are the new vine that came up from that node will be the same as the mutated leaf. So if you find some interesting mutations in your Hoyas, feel free to cut them up because sometimes you may have discovered a new mutation. Now, of course, sometimes these different forms of the same Hoya are just found in different parts of like an island or parts of a region where the climate is slightly different. This is why some of the Hoyas have adapted to the climate that they are found in. Some are found maybe in the, on like on top of the tree, some are found like lower down downstream by the beach. So they flower the same. This is why they're, the name of the Hoya, the species name is the same, but they just have different forms and people have been naming them so many names. So I can't even keep track of all these names anymore but look at how beautiful this is this is an amazing sigillatus they have displayed many many mutation within the sigillatus species i really like this one for its almost skin depth it's like vibes but it's got succulent leaves this is the hoya carnosa crinkle 8 i believe this was actually the cross between a carnosa and a hoya compacta now if you ask me i think they are the same species because again some of my Car hoya carnosas have turned into a hoya compacta some of the leaves just turn curly and if i have propagated those leaves it will probably turn into a hoya hindu rope this is a hoya buntokensis and i'll actually own one of them i was just asking the salesperson why this one looks a bit different this has longer narrower leaves and it's almost all green although mine is a little bit like chubbier leaves rounder with a little bit more of a maroon color with more extreme splash on them i actually do like both varieties this is pretty interesting too it's got a clean look to them but the buntok actually forms a rosette as a, when it was young and then they start to trail out a little bit more as its base has established and this is actually a verticillata and I own one of this. I don't know where I placed mine actually. I think I might have lost it. But I mine is actually different. I really love this for its amazing black colored rim around the edge. It's also one of the faster growing Hoyas. This is another verticillata. Just as a comparison, let me put them side by side. These three plants are all verticilladas. That means that they flower very similarly. But the, the one of was apparently found in the lower lands, one was found in the higher lands. So yeah, they can ex exhibit really, really different leaf shapes, different venations. But again, they will flower the same. They will have similar flowers. That is really, really cool. I only discovered this about Hoyas thanks to this booth and I would really love a chance to stop by in their nursery to do like a maybe more extensive episode on Hoyas because the salesperson is so knowledgeable. I actually thought that this was the owner talking to me, but he was just a salesperson. How amazing this is. He, they actually found passionate people to work in the nursery, which is really, really good. It's not easy to find people like that. So this is a Hoya Buntok Splash. It's very similar to the Buntok Kensis that we saw earlier, but this is the Splash variety. As you can see, it does start out a little bit more rosette and compact, and then it will start pushing out these long vines. Now, I might have probably lost a lot of people by now because I know that not everyone is into Hoyas, but thank you so much for sticking around. This is the Hoya Hushkaliana variegated. This is also a popular var variety of variegated Hoya. This one here is the Hoya Caudada. We saw a Hoya Caudada, I think in the, earlier in the episode, there was a different form. There was a silver splash, but this is from Aceh. Aceh is from the northern tip of Indonesia. This Hoya used to be very popular two years ago. They are actually very fast growing. It's got very beautiful, beautiful leaves that is very primitive looking. It's bringing a lot of jungle vibes. And for people who are perfectionists, this is not the plant for you because it's going to have very, very wild look to them. And then they 
also flower quite beautifully apparently and this is one that's easy to propagate so I re actually do recommend this for beginners and they can take some direct sunlight so they really want to be under a grow light or like a sunny window this is a Hoya imperialis this is actually a very very common Hoya but it's got beautiful blooms it's known for its amazing flower and it's actually very generous about the flowering I have actually overwatered and killed mine but look at this new growth here this is how they grow a new vine. This is amazing. I love watching them sprout this tiny little vine and then they will expand in size and then take over. They'll take over your living space very quickly because they will clamber around looking for something to lasso itself onto. This is the Hoya Waimainiai Splash. We did a tour actually before at Vernonia Nursery where they're growing a lot of these out. This is actually quite nice. They're also coming to the market quite a lot here in Indonesia. There's many leaf shapes and varieties of these. This one is particularly cute. It's like a smaller leaf. I think the one that I saw before was probably a larger leaf. This is an interesting Hoya Dekiai because this is not as chubby or as wide as the normal Dekiai. I think they're also a common Hoya in the Western civilizations. But the Dekiais are actually not common here and I think this is because they are very easy to overwater. This is a, a Hoya that's very slow growing for me at least and they really really cannot be overwatered. They will not forgive you at all. Very similar to the Hoya Carii which we don't see around here as much. This is a Hoya Lacunosa Golden Flame. This is one variety of the Hoya Lacunosa. Now they explained to me that they, I think they have more than 10 varieties of Hoya Lacunosas. There are collecting them quite extensively and obviously propagating them. So feel free to reach out to them if you want to look into some of the Hoya Lacunosa varieties that they have. We will also be covering uh, quite a bit more in the upcoming few minutes. But this one has amazing variegation that looks a little bit like the Epipremnum Aureum. It's got this dreamlike yellow variegation on them. And Hoya Lacunosas are very good for beginners. This is one that is a slightly different variety. This is called the Hoya Lacunosa tricolor. He explained that this is a very, very slow growing, probably the most slow growing Lacunosa because Lacunosas are actually known to be pretty fast growing, especially the all green version. This one in my hand is the Amarillo. This is also interesting. This, in fact, this actually looks like a different Bakia. <laughs> Look at that. That looks exactly like a different diff Bakia leaf. It looks like it's reflecting light. And then there are some more Lacunosas in the back here. This is the silver, I, I think, silver mint coin. It's also very nice. It's got like this very ghosty, minty type leaf. If that's, if that's something that you're into, this is the plant for you. Now, I do want to reiterate that Hoya Lacunosas are generally some of the easiest Hoyas to grow and they do bloom quite profusely. So I do recommend the Lacunosa for beginners. And of course, if you don't want to splurge on these rarer Lacunosas, you can absolutely start with the all green form. They are very, very fast growing, very rewarding, and they will teach you a thing or two about growing Hoyas. And back here, we've got another one. They look so nice in this trellis that they're given. I've actually seen many, many Hoya hacks with trellis and how to display them. This is one thing that I really like about Hoyas. They can also trail down. Sometimes it's Hoya Bella. It actually is a Hoya that likes to trail down. But in nature, I have, I'm have i pretty sure all plants are not trailing plants. They want to climb up to access better light. This is a Hoya Carnosa Compacta Regalis. This is a more common variegated Carnosa compacta because there are actually some other varieties that are even more rare than this. I used to buy this for a lot of money. It used to cost like insane because they do grow like a new leaf every six months or so. This is how long it takes for them to grow. So this is not a cheap or easy Hoya to care for. It actually is easy to overwater them and pests can really really hide in the crevices and it's really hard to hard to notice them and hard to get to them this is the more expensive one this is the one that has the variegation on the inside it's called the compacta mauna loa this is probably even slower growing than the one with the variegation on the outside because it's got less chlorophyll. This compacta actually holds a special place in my heart. They do flower really beautifully. Mine, actually, I'm struggling with it because I keep overwatering them or sometimes underwater them and they just need that consistent care. 
This is a Hoya Sulawesiana. It used to be popular again, this is two years ago, but I hope that they will do well here in Indonesia because not a lot of people in Indonesia are collecting these, but they are known for these like necktie shaped leaves very similar to an anthurium vitarifolium. This Hoya Bella is putting out multiple vines. It's just so happy. This is a, not an easy Hoya in my opinion, especially here in the tropics. They do need a bit of cooler or temperate climate to be happy. They don't like to dry out completely unlike other Hoyas, but they can absolutely drown if you overwater them. They can turn yellow and they won't forgive you. This next plant is a mystery to me and I don't see that many here in Indonesia, probably because it looks like a weed. This is the Hoya Retusa. For me, it's actually very challenging to care for this plant because it doesn't like to be overwatered. But if you leave them to dry out for too much, their leaves can shrivel up and just turn into like a dried grass basically. So this is not an easy Hoya for me, but let me know in the comment down below if you had better luck with them. But when they grow beautiful and lush, they look like firework, which is amazing. This is a very interesting Hoya Lacunosa and I bet it's very expensive. It's, the, it's called the Asami and Asami apparently in Japanese language means good morning, but with a cheerful note, I guess. We are now back in the realm of Hoya Lacunosas. These are more varieties. This is the Hoya Lacunosa Leopard Skin. It does look like the Hoya Croniana Super Eskimo to me. I don't know how to tell them apart, except Lacunosas I think have more of a, like a spade, like a narrower leaf than the Croniana, which has a little bit of a wider, chubbier leaf. This is the Gray Ash. It actually looks really amazing. I really wish I can own all of these Hoyas, but I need to hold myself back because I have actually killed a lot of Hoyas during my move and I am an overwaterer and Hoyas are not that suitable for me to be honest. There are some beautiful trellised Hoyas here. I bet these are pretty rare Hoyas because I don't even know how to describe them. They are so lovely. I don't know the species name of all these Hoyas coming to the market. Feel free to find them on Instagram if you have any questions about Hoyas. There's an Aglonema contest going on now and look at all these beautiful full pots of Aglonemas. Indonesians do love competition for plants and that is an amazing thing to watch sometimes. All right, I hope that you've enjoyed this one. We've got one more episode coming, I think, tomorrow. And please do check out the other two episodes in case you missed the other two because all of them are quite interesting. We, I cover random plants. They're in no particular order. You don't have to watch them in any chronological order. And with that being said, I wish that you guys are doing well and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.